Welcome to We Don't Have a Title. Uh, my name is Renee Pena, and many of you know me as Renee Emilio. Today, we're going to do an episode number one. Today's guest will be Hannah. A little bit of story about Hannah and how I met Hannah. As you guys know, I work at La Bodega Latina here in Portland, Maine. I randomly just met Hannah as a customer. She came in, I don't know how many years, but it's probably like three to four, probably was, five years ago. It was a ago. long time ago, yeah. It was a long time ago. And I remember her just coming in with her son. He was pretty small by then. And her back then husband. And I don't know, It was it's something attractive that I found that I'm like, you know what? I, I like her. And randomly, I bump into her on Instagram. And I'm like, oh, follow. As many else, we, as many... Just like we all do, we creep on people <laughs> in a good way, in a very good way. So, Hannah, welcome. Thanks for having me here. I am so excited. I know. I'm very excited yeah. to have you here. Um, we never hang out out of Ever. our Instagram tag post and like each other's stuff. I think I saw you a couple of times at the gym. Uh, Which Port one? The one in Portland. Um Fitness Factory. Oh, at Fitness Factory. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That and was I, quite a while And I ago. saw your dad there, too. Oh, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yes. <laughs> Jack, my dad used to go to the gym and just take selfies. <laughs> <laughs> he would, he, and he just sensed it. Like, yeah. I'm like, you go in for 30 minutes, you're just running the cardio. And take a selfie. And take a selfie. He's like, well, I was sweating. I'm like, no, I can tell. Anyways, Hannah, I'm very, I'm very happy for you to be here. I, The reason why I followed you is because... You always give these amazing tips. Oh, uh, you are aware of self care. You are aware of fitness, and I like those kind of people. I believe that you bring so much into people's life. You brought to me because <laughs> I hate to say it, but I'm always buying iced coffee, and I always have a re. Uh, I'm going to say it again. I always have an iced coffee with me. And I always, when I get a straw, I always think of Hannah. Because she's very aware of recycle, don't yes. use plastic. And yes. I feel very guilty right now having this <laughs> drink with me yeah. in front of you. My son and I did a beach cleaning last week. <laughs> <laughs> and how many straws have you found? No, We only found one. Oh, that's not but bad. But we found 67 um, cigarette butts. Oh, it, it was disgusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, we're, I'm not a smoker. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. So, that's a good so Hannah, tell us a little bit about you, what you do, and for my audience to know, like, who you are. Okay, so uh, I am half Dominican, like you. Yes. I, yes, so that's something that we have in common. Um, so something that a lot of people don't know, and I usually don't like to share, is that I grew up in a very, very Christian religious christian very strict um community almost like a cult and oh i was part of uh, that for a long long time and growing up i was super super sick and my dad always said it was you know it was something else and he never believed in you know the natural route no i got it so yeah, so I want to talk about that maybe in a little bit. But, yeah, that's fine. We can um, go back to it. I, I, I can I can relay. I grew up in a not Christian but, but Catholic. Catholic yeah, very Dominican. We all yes. know that we are very they, they are very strict to Catholic. Yes, and it can drive everybody crazy. And yeah. sometimes we grow up with certain people, and we just don't want to. Yeah, we just want to don't be that part of mm -hmm. that religion area. Yeah. So yeah, growing up was really really tough because I was the very odd duckling growing up i was always i always had a big mouth and a thing i used to always say i don't run with those who run you had a voice so my dad never liked that about me because i was you know out there with everything i questioned everything and that's my motto in, in life i question everything but uh a little bit about me i used to do um cna work for a long time and i used to think i wanted to go into the nursing field and for me, um, just seeing the way um, nurses were super, super unhealthy and they were so fake, I was like, I don't want to be part of this fake world where nurses are, you know, most of them were overweight. Um, they smoked and yes, I, they were preaching I something that. that they did not do. So for me, after, you know, working in that industry for six years, I was like, I'm done with this. I'm going to start my own thing. 
And I didn't even know what I was going to start. But, I, but, you, but then, you knew that you have to get out of yeah, that situation. Yeah, I did. And, and I of, like that. Out of desperation, I started cleaning. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start cleaning for, like, the rich. I'm going to start, like, making my own natural products. And I'm going to go with it. And, you know, seven years later, I have a very successful, eco-friendly cleaning company i usually don't talk about it but that's but that's, that's that's fine that's what i that's do fine. i really like the echo cleaning area yes because we do use a lot of unhealthy yes my mom is in my oh mom, bleach it's everything yeah, is everything bleach. is bleach my mom yes. my mom i grew up in a cleaning system like in a not in a cleaning system but in a cleaning company since i was a kid because my dad used to own uh, bodegas in Boston, yeah. And my mom used to clean. Yeah. But, you know, my parents are divorced, but it's they it's so hard. Like it just it does so bad for you. What yourself. is that stuff that they use? Uh, mistoline. Mistoline, fabuloso, oh, yeah, pine the- salt. It's just terrible for you. Yes. It's like you you inhale these terrible fumes. They're yeah. Fumes. They're so bad for you. But I love that you do that. I want to touch. I please let's come back to that um, because. Nobody really takes care of that, what we mm-hmm. inhale. And I mm-hmm. want you to give at least, you know, a few tips for people to practice it at okay. home. Um, and that would be great to do that. So yeah. if you want to continue. Okay. And I like that you point out that the nurses are fake. I kind of agree not with that. Every, not, not all. Not every, all not of all. them. But I but. agree. <laughs> I, the bodega that I'm at right now in Portland, we are across from the main medical center. Yeah. And I am amazed how they are big smokers. And it's terrible. It's like, is this what you're going into the hospital and, and pretend that, oh, you're going to get well, you're going to get healthy? Like, if you're going to practice something, be the example. Exactly. Hold on. I'm right? trying to. I'm trying to set this up. Oh, it's okay. I know you're videotaping us. There's too much going so, on. No, here. don't worry. We can, we can always cut the video. We can always do yeah. it. The video is the easy. But I probably. I want to get you in there. How are you, Jack? I'm so tired. <laughs> Good morning, Jack. Good morning. <laughs> don't worry. I'm gonna, is, the, is Uber Eats a thing here? Yes. Yes. Let me go there. All right. Not you should get should. some food. Should, right? Yeah, do it. It's like, this is the... So who's online? 14 people who's online. Hopefully they'll join us. But like, yeah, you can save that. And the what? You can save it. Yeah, the live. The, the live, you can save it and yeah. like play it for like 24. Yesterday, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that. And apparently, I am glad yesterday's didn't, didn't save. Oh, but today is gonna save because I didn't have the settings correctly. Yeah. So apparently yeah, now, now it's gonna. Me, you know, one okay. Way or another, and I can mix it in with Perfect. This where I could, yeah. Perfect. All right, let's go. Sweet. Let's get it so back. yeah, let's go. I guess. All right. Go. So we t- continue. I um, I know that you have a son. I do. So let me like backtrack a little bit and then like tell you how I pretty much just got into fitness. So. Um, growing up, I had terrible migraines. Um, I used to have migraines pretty much like three times a day. And my dad used to say that I would get migraines the days that we had to go to church. Which, so you don't go, so you don't need to go. So I didn't have to go. Uh, so he would Dominican always say, <laughs> oh, that's like a demon or like he would pray for me and nothing. And I was always sick, sick growing up. Um, long story short, when I came to the States, I was 22. I came by myself and I started, you know, I was still eating a lot of crap. Did you grow up in Portland? So I grew up um, in Bradford, Maine, in a farm. Where is that? It's like way up north. It's oh my like God. 20 minutes past Bangor. And it's like, it was like a Christian community. Uh, not a lot of people know this, but I grew up in a weird Christian community where they lived together. And then my dad wanted to start something and in the Dominican Republic and that went to poop. It didn't go very well. So we kind of like went back and forth. So I grew up, uh, in the Dominican Republic and in Bradford. So it's like, when you say Dominican Republic, where specifically? Because I have a very La Vega. In La Vega. La Vega. Oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> La Vega, Jack, it's a very... That's where all the beauty queen comes out of. Yes. Top beauty queens. And 
it's very known for its carnival. It's in February, right? carnival. Mm -hmm. Carnaval. Carnaval, which yeah. is the festive it's of carnivals. It's the second biggest um, carnival like in the world. The in first, the world. Yeah, yeah, the first one is in Brazil, and then Dominican Republic has like the second one, and people like dress up in crazy costumes and they chase you and hit you with boot, like. It's just fun. It's, it's fun. crazy. It's a huge it's, party yeah. in February. Yeah. Just yeah. so you know, Jack, you need to go. So anyway, so I grew <laughs> up there, and like I said, I was always very sick. So when I came here to the States, I was by myself pretty much, and I was like eating like McDonald's, um, Burger King, and I was like, before that, I was like always underweight, so I was like 110 pounds. Less than what you are now? Yeah, I weigh 132 wow. right now, so I was like 110 pounds, so I was like super underweight, I was like having tons of migraines, then I came to the States, and then I started eating McDonald's, like all that stuff, so within six months, I was 160 pounds. Wow. Six months. I feel bad right now because I do eat McDonald's. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just I. So. Go ahead. Anyways, I was super, super unhealthy. I was feeling like crap. And then I met my husband, which was my boyfriend at the time. Which that's the guy that you came in at the store. Yeah. Okay. And then I got pregnant. So when I got pregnant, I was like, you know what? I need to do something about my life. You know, I need to start eating healthy. Like, I started researching. So I started little by little, you know, eating healthy. And I was like, wow, I start feeling better, blah, blah, blah. And then my migraine stopped going away. And I was like, wait, what's going on? Like, maybe it's my hormones. So I came across a book. This guy named, um, doc, doc, his name is Mark Hyman, Dr. Mark Hyman. And he has this whole thing, it's called like integrated medicine, which looks at you from like the core and not just like one diet. So he believes that everybody is different. So what works for you doesn't work for me. I, I've always say that. So pretty much that's where I started reading a lot of his stuff. And then I started, you know, following a lot of his stuff. And then that's, you know, the whole eating. So I started eating super healthy just because I was pregnant. And then after my son was born, I started working out. And so you have never worked out in your life. Mm -hmm, never. How was that first entrance to that gym? It was scary, isn't it? Right. It was like super scary because I was like that girl at the cardio machine, and I was like doing cardio for like a year. <laughs> and we yeah, I did that because I was like so yep. like I had no clue what to do with weights and all that stuff. And then I had a random guy approached me and he was like oh you should you know try to like do squats and I'm like I had no clue what to do so anyways he's kind of like showed me a little bit in the gym and then at that time my husband was doing um power lifting at the and, same gym yes and we went to like a meet and I saw a girl her name is um Jade Sokovi do you follow her on Instagram no what's her name Jade Sokovi she's lost like over a hundred pounds, and she's like huge aware. in the I power lift. Okay, so I saw her, and I'm like, "Holy shit, who's this chick?" So I went to talk to her. And I'm like, "So what do you do?" She's like, "Oh, I just like you know power lift." So I'm like, "I want to be like that girl." Good, good so, inspiration. Yeah, so I literally like after I met her, I was like, "I want to learn how to power lift," and that's pretty and that's much that's where you got into that's the fitness. I got it into it. I just I started it. lifting weights, and I loved it. Did, did you work out while you were pregnant? I didn't. You didn't. You did, did it after. After, yeah, wow. like a year after I was, I had. My I love son. that. I love that you have courage to change your life, change mm -hmm. your situation, yeah, and make it better. And you knew, yeah, that you had to do, and you did it. I did it for my son. Like I was like, you know what? I'm pregnant. Like. It was a pregnancy that wasn't, ex you know, I, we didn't plan to be pregnant, but mm -hmm. I was like, you know what, I want to have this child, but if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it the right way. So I, I bought like all the health books and I was like, That's I need good. To, yeah. That's good. So I did Very it good. for him. And your son was born healthy? Super healthy. He was huge. Amazing. Like super big. I love that. I love that. And I've always, when I follow Hannah, she helps her son. Well, I don't know if you help him, but he looks like he knows how to cook. Yes. And he cooks very yes. good. <laughs> I I was like the black sheep growing up, but my son is the perfect child. It's not to brag, but my son is like amazing. Like he loves to eat healthy. And I think it's because 
I started feeding him like super, super healthy. Like I never bought like uh, bottled, what do you call it? Like the food that's pre-made. I never did that. I was like, I'm going to make my own food. Like compotas? Compotas. I never gave him a compotas. Compotas. I have to, I have to find the definition of compota <laughs> in, in English. What is baby food? Baby food. Yeah, like yeah, baby food. She never, she never feed herself. No, baby food. I Good. literally made all his food. I breastfed him till he was 18 months. Wow. He was walking and talking. That's amazing. I, I like I like that. I like that you help him and he sees that example in yeah. you. Because nowadays we see a lot of parents just give the easy food to them, yeah. which is what's available, fast food, like yeah. chips and these type well, of drinks are so unhealthy for you. Yeah, I got shit one time like on social media, on Facebook, because I... I don't have Facebook anymore. I don't know if you noticed, but I deleted no, no. it. I deleted it like Good for you. six months ago. <laughs> but years ago, I posted that parents that feed their children are abusing. That's a sort of like abuse. And people are like, that's not true. And I'm like, yes, it's it's abuse because children don't have a choice. They don't know. So you, I'm, They learn are, what you, you give are, them. You are abusing that child because you are giving him junk. You as a parent know it's junk. And you're still giving it to that child. Because the they child, want it. But the child doesn't know it's junk. Exactly. So that's, in a way, that's abuse. And exactly. I had so much backlash You see, I don't, I don't I'm not a father, but I, I, I am, I helped my mom raise two siblings of mine. They're very young aged. One is uh, actually going into college and just. 17 and the other one's like 11 years old and i always i used to see how my mom used to feed them and buy these pre-made stuff and i got to her and i'm like do you know what this mac and cheese has in that powder cheese mm -hmm. she's like no i'm like well here there's a video and i showed her i'm like yeah. this cheese that's powder cheese gives cancer mm -hmm. did you knew that she's like no i'm like well there you go so after that, they have learned their way to change their yeah. eating habits. And so do you it's just so it's, just, it's terrible out there. Do you think like people don't know that food is unhealthy or do you think it's just for convenience? Because that's a question I ask myself a lot, because for me, like I always like I go to the store and I always like like to read labels and it's like people, I, I read labels. Yeah. And it's like, do people actually do you think people actually know that is bad no. or they just don't care like I live that I think that we live in a very fast fast paced world in general I think we're too busy concentrating on work we're too yeah. busy on concentrating on make money to support our family to pay their bills that some of us and even me including me even though I'm a freak with the food yeah. I tend sometimes to eat pretty bad yeah. And I'm guilty of it. And I feel terrible afterwards. Yeah. But I think that some of some of us don't look at labels. Some of us don't even care what's in it. And we probably know, but we don't. We just don't have the time for that. If. Do you think we ha we don't have time or we don't want to make time? We don't want to make time. Okay. We don't want to make time. Because I, I feel I, I like do we do have time. Yeah, so, but it takes time. Like, you know how many time? Like, you know okay, how many hours it takes to make know, like, meal prep? But like, look at look at my situation. Not to put myself in a pedestal, I had like a really like shitty situation happen to me. Like you know, with like with my husband passing and all that stuff. And I don't like I don't make excuses for what happened. Like I was stuck with nothing. I was left with nothing. Like he had no life insurance. He had nothing, and I was left with. You have nothing. With nothing, pretty much. And you And, hustle. you know, it's like I didn't choose to, like, fall into this whole pity, oh, like, I'm by myself and I have to raise this child by myself. You, I don't and, have family. And you it's, raise a child and I know you go to the farmer's market. Yeah. That's big. Yeah. Now, farmer's market these days are expensive. Yes. How do you manage? I am super... Aware of what you're gonna buy, like, yes, it's, like, a, it's, it's all about planning. Like, I am a I love to plan, and it's like if you just go to the for me, if like if you just go to the grocery store, like the grocery store is literally made by they they bring in a psychiatrist and they literally plan the whole store, like the whole way that apples and everything is stacked mm -hmm. is literally made to lure people Vision. into 
into certain so, yes. Yeah. So the whole thing when you walk into the store, like the first thing you usually see is all the aisles of junk, <clears throat> and that's where the majority of people go into, and that's I call it the death zone. Ah, <laughs> no, that's that's. It's literally the death zone because if you walk in and you take a right or a left, mm -hmm. you're safe. But if you go in the middle, you're going into the death zone. So you take a left, and usually you have like your vegetables, your fruits, your. That's cheese. usually where you go yeah. in. The then you go to the area. back. You get your meats. Then you get your eggs, your cheeses, and then you leave. Yeah. If you go into the middle, you're dead. Don't go hey, in I, the I, middle. I, I, you know what? Now that I'm picturing, I kind of see it. It's like a, wow. Yes. Ah, I'm, I learned something today. <laughs> yeah, so. Good, very good. I like that. You know, I while we were talking about that, you mentioned about your husband passing away. Mm -hmm. I was your, I, I, I was your follower by then, and it touched my heart. Mm -hmm. It touched okay. my heart because it just happened randomly. You did. It happened randomly, and I'm like, it shakes me. And every time I see some situation like that it shakes me, yeah, as a human, because and I always tell this to everybody: we're here today, but we don't know tomorrow. We don't. He was a super healthy. I remember. I remember you person. walking him into the gym. I'm mean, into the the bodega. Yeah. And I was like, wow, what a perfect family. Yeah. And boom, I don't know where. Yeah. Can you do you mind sharing? No, a little no, bit of it's that? it's it's addiction. You know, like a lot of people don't talk about it. It's something that's very hidden. Addiction. People, people drug addiction. Okay. So people think that you know drug addiction are people out in the streets, and it's like you know drug addiction. It it Could touches anybody. It's like the wealthy, and usually, for from what I've seen, cleaning, I've noticed that there's more addicts they're rich than poor people because they have they're more likely to get their doctors to prescribe them medication and you know doing my job a lot of my clients or most of my clients you know they use you know painkillers yeah. like say and, you and know, I, whatever. Like that, I like that you say that because it's it's not only drugs we have a, we have a, a like for example us the latins we think drug as what it is like yeah. marijuana or yeah. cocaine or that's so, just not that but itself. if you if you look at the, the the definition of drug and medication they're both the same exactly so a medication and a drug is something that's used to to treat a symptom it's not it's not there to cure you so majority of people are on drugs like if you take even tylenol tylenol Ty is exactly. a drug tylenol is Any, a drug it's a drug yeah um Whatever, any kind of pain medication, you know, you are on the pill, to, you know, an, you know, antipsychotics. All those are drugs. Their medication and drugs are the same thing. So, it's something that a lot of people they look down on people that, you know, like with my husband, there were a lot of comments on Facebook. Oh, one less junkie off the street. And I'm like, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know what happened. You don't know his story. Like this person was like. And Advid, you know, he was like a health nut. He was in the gym seven days a week. He ate super clean. He meal prepped. But he had, you know, an addiction. Like, he liked to use drugs on the side. And, you know, it's... Did you ever try to push him away from it? I did. But it was something... It's hard. It's something that he, um, he had going on since he was, like early like teens okay so it's something that he never got help for and even and though you knew that going i into knew that things. and he struggled on and off and you know he would get clean and but you were there would, to help yes i Good. was with him for 14 years wow yes wow 14 years 14 years Listen, I, I, you I, don't I, see that anymore <laughs> it's t well it's hard i i i feel when i see and hear about relationships over 10 years i'm like how do you do it yeah how do you manage to deal, manage uh, to live with someone for over yeah. 10 years, 20 years? It's tough. You know, we yeah. live in this world. Everybody's yeah. different. It is. To... I think social media has made things a little more difficult for, for relationships. Yeah. Because people, like you say, like we're in, the, we're in this whole thing that we want fast, easy, quick. And that's the whole thing with, with relationship. You know, people want easy, quick, fast filtered looking girls yeah and it's you know it's right there on your phone it's all right there on your phone that's, it's that's, like you don't have to even yeah. have a, a real conversation with people it's just visual they visual. they 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 get their mind and yeah 
Oh, and I think for us, like, we met before all that, and we, like, dated and did all that fun stuff. So I think that's what pretty much kept us together, that we still had that before, the whole Instagram, Facebook mm-hmm. went crazy. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's out there, and it's temptation. It is. It is temptation, and I, I, I'm glad that we, we touched base on that, on your husband passing away, and you you're a strong woman thank you you're a strong woman and i am like go hannah Thanks. because it takes you're brave you're mm-hmm. brave to move on to continue your lifestyle and to show your son yeah. that you can do better in yeah, this yeah and world. talk about it and talk you know, about not it. a lot of people are, how old was he when he passed away he was 33 your son oh my son he was 10 it was three days before his birthday and wow. we still had his birthday plan plan and we still went with it how showed up. how can it, how does a, a child of 10 years old who's 10 you said yes. that is why you're aware of i have a dad you know yes. like how did he manage that i like, think he, i'm 28 and i feel like geez if i lose someone right now i'm like i, I just want to go in bed I think my son and I are very alike in that sense. Like, my son is, like, super, super strong. Like, he, he'll he come and ask me. He's like, Mom, are you okay? Like, can I do anything for you? Aww. So that's, I think that's something that he that he has, that he knew that his dad was, was going through, like, issues. And we talked about he it. Knew? Yes. Wow. We talked about it. Like, I've never... I've had family members that don't agree the way with the way I'm bringing up my son because I'm very open about everything. Well, you know what? The Dom- not the Dominican, but the Latin culture are very judgmental of mm-hmm. what we do with our life. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I, as as a man, it's like I don't care what they say. Mm-hmm. You know, I've moved on in life. I have moved from places to places, changed careers a million times. Yeah. And there's always someone in the family. Exactly. Making a judgment. Yes. And you know what? Every judgment that they do lifts me up mm-hmm. because I'm like, you know what? I'll prove them wrong. Yeah. And to this day, I have. Yeah. So good for you. Thank you. Like I I'm like I like I said before, I'm like the black sheep and like my family's always like you know, I've had people that you know, family that do support me in some of the things, but my, the mo- most of the things I've done with my life, my family doesn't support me because you know I'm very liberal, I'm very open, I'm very non-judgmental, and you know, like coming from that whole religious background, you know, according to to the Bible, I'm going to hell. Yeah. So, which I don't care because <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you can make hell right here on earth. Yeah. So. And uh, like talking, like one thing I, I put down on, on my little notes and I just remembered that I wanted to talk about was the whole religious thing. Like I have a client who is um, super, super religious and I, you know, I love her and she like, I'm the kind of person I consider myself kind of like an owl that I like to observe everything. And I'm the I just, same way. I'm, you know, that's like my spirit animal is the owl. Same way. I like to just walk in a building and just, I sense thing and I look around and, you know, I get Are a, you about energy. Yes. I'm absolutely. all about the energy. Yes. If I, I can, don't feel the energy, yes. trust me, I'm going to walk. Yeah. Walk my friends, I ha- my best friend, um, my best friend, Jill, Alisa, she's like, Hannah, is this, does this feel right right now? <laughs> she's like, is the energy okay? Cause she knows that I'm like, I'll go into like a building. We'll go to a bar and I'll be like, like, let's leave. I don't like the energy in here. So I'm the she's exa- pretty good. I'm, I'm the exact way. But anyways, this person, um, it's kind of like what happened to me growing up that I feel like a lot of like in religion and people, they don't listen to their bodies. They're always blaming an outside source for their sickness. And this person, she is, she and her children are always sick. Like she's always like depressed. She has all these issues. And I've you know, slowly try to, throughout the years, try to give her advice, and she just doesn't doesn't get it. it. And the whole thing, like, with me, like, my dad would blame my migraines on demons, and they would pray for me, and it didn't help. And migraines are, the reason I used to get migraines was because I was allergic to a lot of foods. So 
people that have migraines, the, the reason people get migraines, it, they're all related to food. It's food allergies. You know, nitrates give you migraines. Wow. It, yeah. Wow. So I've never gone. A my, migraine starts in your gut and you feel it in your head. But a migraine always starts in your gut. Wow. So people that are listening and you have migraines, it's like you should do what it's called the elimination diet where you eliminate certain foods, all foods. And then you write down what you ate that day, everything you ate. And then you just just say, how did you feel that day? If you felt fine, none of those foods. I've heard of that. Yeah. Then the next day you start with different foods and you write down. So if you get a migraine that day, you're like, oh, what what did I eat? Was it the pizza? Maybe it was the cheese or maybe it was the tomato sauce. So it's something. So that's it's a little complicated, but that's how I figured out that my yeah, migraines yes. were triggered by food. But the whole thing is that a lot of people try to blame like something else for the reason that they are feeling depressed. And it's like if you would just literally change your whole diet and start exercising, you wouldn't even need dep- antidepressant. Like you would feel much better. And it's like stop blaming, stop blaming something no, else and. <laughs> Has and that and ever, change it. Has no. that ever happened to you that you would crap and then you feel like crap? Well, I, let's say. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, I, I'm a big food person. I love yeah. to eat. And I was a little bit overweight. Yeah. And I started noticing that the more I eat, like it wasn't, I wasn't getting better. Yeah. Because... I was getting tired pretty much. And you I were was, feeling depressed? I was feeling depressed. Yes. I was, Hannah, I want you to come back thanks. because I I connect with you and I want my audience to connect with you. I love what you do. Thank you. I think you are not a black sheep. Oh, I know. You, <laughs> you are a star. Thanks. And we are, are a star and that's what I want to implement in this in this podcast, we all go through things yes. in life. We all go through struggles and obstacles. But we as human, for example, you are brave. You take risk and you motivate and you change your life. And that's what it's all about. I think it's self-awareness yeah. that you need to change something. Mm-hmm. And you did it. And right now you're amazing. You are you have your son. You live a life. And I love that. And I, 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 I want you to continue that. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for yeah. all the Instagram story. You should tell people what's your Instagram so they can start following you. If you love what we just spoke, tell them your Instagram. Okay. So, yeah, like I said, thank you for having me here. Um, my Instagram is Healthy Latin Spice. And, yeah, um, it was really nice talking to you. And, yeah, I think for me, like, my story it's like having a hard childhood what would you tell those people that are that they think that they're alone in this in their situation like, but what would you, let's say this question right motivate them okay i so if you think that you're the only person out there that's going through crap or what whatever like don't think that way i think life gives you things to test you. I believe we are all um, spiritual beings living a human experience. And I, I always that. tell people, remember who you are. I love that. So it, there's a source, what I believe there's a source, and then we're here just living this human experience, and we are being tested every single day. And it's up to us to either you know move forward and, and pass that or stay there. So those challenges that come to us, they're not there forever. It's just a test in life. Be like, you have the choice to like either, you know, move forward with it and make the best out of it. So like, don't feel like, oh, poor me. Why me? Like, why don't I have this? Like, I always say, but I might not have a million dollars, but I am healthy. I have my eyes. I can walk. I live in America, like, on a free. Like, there's so much. So if you live with a heart full of, you know, gratefulness, I think more good things come to you. So I like that. I like yeah. that. I I agree with you. Yeah. I love it. I believe that we all need to know that we're not alone. We're not. And it's just a situation or a phase that's just 
you're gonna learn something from mm-hmm. it. It's all a test. It's a test. It's a test. Life that is a test. You gotta sit down and say, you know what? What can I do to move on? Yeah. Good. Well, Hannah, thank you for coming. I do want to invite you later on yes. through the podcast. I know this is episode one, and I'm so happy to have you. And please um, su- uh, subscribe, share, comment, or like. And if you have anybody that you want and you think it's willing to come in or Skype or video to share their stories and to tell our people that we're not here alone, that there's another one in another country, in another state that is going through the same thing, mm-hmm. please, you know, recommend them or recommend them or send them definitely send them to me and we are very happy to have you here thank you this was so much fun can't wait to do it again yay (laughs) awesome jack i know you were quiet today but we love you (laughs) (laughs) okay bye-bye